an important jury decision last week has uh, still got people in one Kentucky town talking after a football coach was acquitted last week in the death of one of his teenage players. 37-year-old Jason Stinson was removed from his job in January when a grand jury indicted him on a reckless homicide charge and wanton endangerment in the August 2008 death of Max Gilpin. We, the jury, find the defendant, David Jason Stinson, not guilty. Last Thursday, a jury acquitted Stinson of both charges. 15-year-old Max Gilpin died three days after collapsing during football practice. Other players testified that Stinson had ordered the team to run repeated sprints in extreme heat as a punishment. Joining us now are Max Gilpin's family, mom Michelle, stepdad William, half-sister and half-brother Anna and Zachary, and also Jefferson County Assistant Commonwealth Attorney John Heck. Good morning to you all. Good morning. Good morning. Let me start with you, John. Why did you guys bring this case in the first place? Well, uh, I think admittedly this was an unusual situation, but we, we brought it because we had a number of complaints uh, to law enforcement, uh, Jefferson County Public Schools, and in fact to our office even before Max died that what some witnesses saw in that practice field wasn't a normal football practice. Mm -hmm. So not only did we have a 15-year-old uh, in intensive care, we had a number of complaints. The charges were brought only after uh, approximately 200 tape statements and interviews were brought in, reviewed with the medical records. But you felt like what he was doing was different than what happens on every other football practice field and every other high school all over the country, coast to coast? Regardless of the, yes. Um, now how different, I, I can't say because okay. I can't, I don't know what's going on in every practice. All right, all right. I do know that I had approximately 10 to 20 neutral witnesses. In other words, they were there to watch an, another game. They had no ties to the community or to the football team. Mm -hmm. And some of them played high school football and they said, this isn't high school football. What we're seeing out here is abuse. Now mm -hmm. that was their opinion, not right, ours. Right. We reviewed their statements. We reviewed the player's statements and put it before a grand jury. In the state of Kentucky, a grand jury brings the chargers. Gotcha. Michelle, this journey has been difficult to say the least this last year. Yes. How was it for you when you sat in that courtroom last week and heard the words acquitted? We were disappointed, um, but the um, one of the things was we knew that this was going to be a difficult case, and um, the biggest point that we wanted to make to the community and, and everyone is that um, we are going to be watching, and that it, it hopefully it raises awareness for the the heat illness and um, and as a matter of fact we had started we started a foundation early on um, through that through the summer and we wanted to um, raise some money to yeah. help with heat awareness and right. those kinds of things how much does the case change when uh, Max's stepmom comes out and says he was ill the night before she could feel he had a fever mm -hmm. as he went out there and then add to this then that he was taking um, he was taking Adderall yes. for ADHD, which might be one of those things that if kids who take it tend to be somewhat compulsive in terms of once they get on something, they're not going to get off of it. Mm -hmm. Once they're determined to finish a book, finish a project, right. or whatever, that's, that's sort of some of the behavior that goes with that. Yes, yes. Do you think all, what, what was the thing that turned the case against you, you think? Well, I think it could have been a number of things, but I do think uh, one of the uh, contributing factors was the statements from Max's stepmother, yeah. and um, uh, you know the whole issue of him being sick uh, the day that day, mm -hmm. and um, it was just that was just a surprise to us. Yeah. Um, you didn't know the day that you walked in. Uh, well, we we had heard okay. we had heard some things yeah. that that she was you know that. People were, were trying to look for those answers that, you know, maybe he was sick that day, trying to uh, put it off on something else. Yeah. And, you know, I just, I, I truly believe that that was not it. Yeah. That was yeah. not it. What do you think turned the case against you? Well, certainly the testimony of the stepmother didn't help us. And, and let, me, let me say, that was not a statement that we were given. In fact, she wouldn't talk to us. Mm. And in a criminal case, you're allowed to do that. You can spring facts during a trial and there's uh -huh. really nothing we can do about it. Every prosecutor is watching this says, I know exactly what this guy's talking about. Right. Um, you have that, you also have, you have the Adderall. With regards to that, we couldn't find another case of, of an athlete across this country who'd suffered a heat stroke due to Adderall. Mm. Now, you know a lot of kids are taking it. I yeah. know a lot of kids are taking it. We looked at, it's into the millions. Where are all the dead kids? 
And yeah. when, when we took that into consideration, we, we thought that it was more of a conduct issue. Yeah. Has Coach Stimson apologized to you? Not personally, no. I mean, he's, um, during the funeral and all that, you know, of course he, as everyone did, offered his condolences and those kinds of things. But as far as a, an apology, no. Do you want one? I, yes, I would like one. I, I, I just want him to take responsibility for what's what's happened. That's the bottom line. And I feel like with the acquittal, there's the, that responsibility hasn't you know he hasn't stepped up to the plate at this time. Uh, this had to be such a difficult year for the whole family. Yes. Just the decision to go ahead with this yes. prosecution is a big, gigantic mm -hmm. step, first and only case of its kind. And Anna, what's the what's the little doll you've got there? This is my Max Bear. Um, I made this on Saturday evening when I went to my friend's birthday party at Build-A-Bear Workshop and we all got to make a free bear and I was going to make one for Max and it was a sleepover at her house that night so I slept over that morning and then one of my friends came to pick me up and took me to my house and I was going to go to the hospital and give it to him but he they told me, he yeah. He had already passed on. He had already passed on. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of people around the country and a lot of attention mm -hmm. and certainly if nothing else the notion of how kids will go how far they'll go to, to yes. please a coach is certainly something that everybody's got in the forefront of their mind right we thank you very very much to thank you coming thank in and talking you. to us this morning really do appreciate thank it thank you